Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about human noise floors. I've been doing a lot of barrier designing and it's a noisy world out there. So I want to walk you through some of the issues with noise because most of you out there, to be honest with you, have no idea what you're doing. I see mistake after mistake after mistake every day. And it's such a waste of time and money. Noise transmission, defined. Noise is energy coming into the room or leaving the room. That's noise transmission. Transmitting of noise. It's vibrational acoustics, okay? Noise floor. How much of that noise gets in our room? And you think about it as a glass of water. The more noise that gets into the room from, from whatever the source, the water level in the room rises, okay? So human activity is full of noise, mechanical, human weather, all kinds of noise. We have to shield ourselves from the elements, you know, the mechanical systems, the HVAC systems, they're all noisy in our room. Everything's noisy. Everything we do in the room, watch TV or whatever we're going to do, we all generate noise. So noise is like the blanket on the bed of resolution. That's what we call it. You know, every has a layer. There's like lasagna. It has layers. So you, you keep adding noise, frequency and amplitude. And each noise sits on top of the other noise. So it's... It's, an, it's a nightmare, so you, you have to be careful. The goal, obviously, is to reduce the noise levels. Noise is decibels, sound pressure level, increased resolution. If we lower the noise floor, we're going to hear more, okay? In a live situation, if we lower the noise floor, people in the room are going to play lower, at lower levels. Wow, what a welcoming sight that is, right? We usually have a design goal in our new rooms, 30, 35 dB SPLs, static measurements, when people are quiet and sitting in the room with, with no noise sources. Most rooms we see 45 to 55 dB. So it's a huge difference, 30, 40% decrease we have to in order to punch it up. But for about every 10 dB of, of lowering noise floor, you increase re the resolution at least 10%, probably more depending on what it's like, you know, throughout the frequency range. You got to measure noise. You got to measure the frequency and the amplitude of the noise over seven days. So we get mins and maxes. We get the maximum pressure level on that day. Let's say Thursday. Thursday's a bad day for some reason. We got garbage and we're a recording studio. We've got garbage trucks. We've got whatever going down the street. Street sweepers, you know, right during our recording session. So the noise floor, the max on that day, is going to be measured. You ever watch garbage trucks set off the motion sensors early in the morning? I think they do that on purpose. Well, here's a good example of pressure uh, affecting everything. So the barrier design is critical. It's frequency and amplitude dependent on your noise numbers over seven days. We look for the quietest part of the day and the loudest part of the day. And then we d design the barrier and even the construction methodology on the barrier is different, depending on the frequency and amplitude of the noise. Noise below 125, completely different design than noise above 25. So people call all the time and say, I'm thinking about building this. And then I say, well, what's your frequency and amplitude of noise? I have no idea. So you don't know if your noise is a lower frequency noise or if it's a higher frequency noise. What if you build a barrier that's only good for above 125 but all your noise is below 125. Guess what? You got to tear it out and start over. So it was a good idea to do some measuring. The old carpenter adage, measure twice, cut once here. Save you a ton of money. Because with noise, you don't want to spend $1 more than you have to. You're never going to get it back. It's permanent construction. It's going into the building. If you own the building, okay, it's yours. When you sell the building, you're not going to get any more money out of it because it's a quiet room. No appraiser I know, and I know a lot of them because I used to be a real estate developer, give you any extra value because the room's quiet. You might spend a hundred grand to get it quiet. You might have spent a hundred grand to get this. People do. You ain't gonna get it out. So isn't it a good idea to measure how big our enemy is first before we go build in something? It's cost effective, right? That's what we want to do. With noise, you don't want to spend one dollar more than you have to. That's why you have to measure. Spend some money, do the analysis, get the numbers, so you don't waste money in the barrier. Human noise floor. Hope this helps. Thank you.
Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.